Hello everybody, let's go through another episode of uh, the Rust basics and sometimes uh, what challenges new Rust people is uh, what is the slice type and why does it exist, right? So let's go through the slice type and um, let's figure out why, what, what happens here, right? And, and why, why it's here. And it's nice here to use this function in the, in the, in the manual because this explains it uh, really well and also the need essentially in the, la in the language. So let's just start a new uh, Rust project, and that's the beauty of Rust, right? It's very minimal. So cargo new slices. So we can go into the uh, slices, and let's open our favorite error editor and go into the main. So let's just copy this thing in here. So first word, and let's uh, let's essentially look at the first problems you would run into if you don't understand the slice time, right? So here we have like the first word thing, and we need here hello world, right? So here already we we are we're running into trouble, right? Because the, the compiler is saying, hey, you no, know, everything is nice, but uh, we're trying here to put in a static uh, string, like a static string uh, reference into a string, and and we're not allowed to do this, right? So there's already a problem, and we wouldn't have that problem if this would be like a slice type, right? So so this this is one of the things why. This this little this little thing would essentially save us a lot of problem, right? Because this just works. But often you see like beginners like having this these uh, function um, uh, patterns, which will use like a lot of problem because now I need to make a, make a string, right? So now you have to do something like string from, and then we take the hello world, and we essentially say how oh, it's great and maybe it is better to uh, and we need to have a ball right? again a ball string so this works but maybe it's good to rename this into the world right and to have the world string so we know what's in there so here we have a world right so what does this return well if we look at the code it takes all the bytes it runs over the, those bytes and enumerates them. So the, this this enumerate function is pretty cool because it actually prepends, like it makes a tuple and then you have like the item and then you get the index out of it. And then it finds the space and runs the index and if it, if it cannot find the space, it assumes the whole thing is a word and returns the length. So this is the function we're working with, right? Very simple. So if we would uh, say this index is this and we would print it, then we would get something like, I assume, it's always nice to run the function, so we have like one, two, three, four, five. And so we would have like the index of five, because we start at zero, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, and the five things that we play is a space. So let's execute the thing, and again, as you can see, we have here the five. So, why now a slice? So let's, for example, we do uh, another function which uses this index to print something like uh, a character, the next character, right? So next character at index, right? So for example, next jar at index, which then again uh, takes a string, which is, uh, let's do the same episode, and we have an index, which is a new size, right? And it will return a jar, right? So here, but let, let, let's let's keep it simple, right? Because I don't want to go into all the, the, the whole thing of defining the types and stuff. So let, let's make it very simple. Right? So let's just make this work. Um, let's make this work. So now it's been used. So now imagine we're running this function next jar at x, and we again take the world, bow the world, and we want it at x. So here we use the index base on the contents of the hello world string. 
So this is this is the important concept to grasp, right? This is the major important context co co concept to grasp. So actually implement this. Yeah? So let's let uh, uh, let's let's just build uh, the s as bytes and let's make a vector out of it, right? Because we actually need to access it. Yeah, and then we say, okay, these are the chars, right? And now we just say we're returning the chars, and now we're indexing inside the string based on this index, right? So this, but remember, this is not how you want to program it, right? This is not how you want to program. It. So next char, that's let's let uh, char is, and let's print this as well. So now we print the char here. And if we would execute this, then everything is fine, right? So, okay, yeah, we find the five, but now we have the next char is 32, but I know what ASCII code is, it's a space. So the next char actually is IDX plus one, right? So this could be then the next, the next thing. So if we execute this, then we have 119, exactly. Because that's the, the, the W. Okay. So we know we know now this works, right? We know this works and, and everything is fine. But now comes the kicker, right? So because Rust helps us, right? It helps us essentially with the type system, it helps us with, with borrowing, it helps us essentially to save memory. So here we have a dependency between the first word function and the next chart IDX, which is based essentially on this string. So any anything in between, if anything in between happens to our hello world string we actually are in problem we have, we are in, we are essentially in problem right here we have we have some some issues so let's do this yeah? so let's just um, clear it right so no no hello world anymore right so now it's clear and um we get an error here it's not mutable so let's go and change this into mutable so um, it's now cleared right so that means essentially here we get a problem right because now we're referencing hello world which is zero on the idx we determined essentially at this function right and this won't this won't fly anymore right so we get an error and that's what we assumed so let's execute it and yes index out of bounds the then is zero but the index is six so here already we introduce we introduce a problem so here this is now a clear case where we can use slices right to help essentially the rust compiler to help us essentially keep this uh, to not make these mistakes right So let's dive into the documentation to see what strings actually, what, what slices actually are, right? So how do we define a slice? Yeah, so this is a nice example. So here we have a string from our world, where the first hello is zero to five, and then world is six to 11. And how does Rust look at this? And this is very important and very well written. So this is similar to taking reference to the whole string, but with the extra zero to five bit. So rather than the reference to the entire string, it's a reference to a portion of the string. And this is very important. So if we would do this, right, and we would like remove all this stuff we, uh, we made here, and we just do, okay, we have the other world string, and we are just going to say hello and rename this. Uh, into hello world exactly and then this can be all off this can be gone let's do print and let's just print hello and let's just print world and let's see what it does and yes we have hello world but now let's do the same thing as we did before so let's try to clear our original string. 
And now comes the magic, right? So because we're doing this, so because this is a, so essentially this is the string, right? But this here is a borrow, right? Borrow both parts of the string. That means that this is a borrow. We want to execute clear, but clear needs to mutate internally the vector that holds the string. So if you go to the definition of the clear method, we can see that here it takes a mutable self. So essentially it, 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 it tries to do a mutable bar of the string to clear it, right? But this cannot be because we borrowed already here, right? So now suddenly we cannot, and let's say the compiler at compile time will barf and say no, no way, you say this is not going. This is going. This is not going to fly. And then essentially, um, we want to use it here, right? But this is also important. Then we have to use it here for this compiler essentially to barf. So let's execute it, and we see a very nice message because it says immutable borrow occurs here right? because it's like an immutable borrow, right? And here. We try to do a mutable borrow inside the scope, right, of essentially this borrow, right? This is very important eh? because that's if you watch my other video about, about, about things, so if I remove this, then essentially it will work, right? Because then uh, this is not being used like over the handle word clear. So if you execute this, then, then everything is just like fine. So only this gives, gives us a problem. So another really nice thing about this is uh, the function signatures, right? So if we would like make a function here, like uh, first word, okay? and now we instead of we do the string, which we had before, if you can remember, we did we did a borrow to a to a, to a string, and we would essentially let's let's just return a slice, now, right? like. And let's let's start using these concepts again, and then we say, okay, the first word, and we know it's the fifth, right? So I'm not going to implement the, implement the whole thing, but this is now going to return a slice of zero to five, which is like the word, and it, now we can do uh, word. Hello is the first word. It's the first word, right? So we can do like. First words, and then we do hello words. Okay. It of course needs a ball. And there we go, right? So now this works, right? But the nice thing now is we don't need to do this. We don't need to do this uh, this whole thing. So essentially what we can now do is uh, um, take this whole hello world and just throw it in here. And now this also works. It's also beautiful, right? If we, of course, change this also in the string slice. And this one is now gone, right? So let's remove it. And we really don't need to see. Let's, let's just print the word hello. Just to illustrate it, and yes, as you can see, it prints a lot. So this is another thing, right? So the nice thing is now this takes this, or we can just do like string from this. It now takes. Of course, we need to have a borrow function for this, right? Yeah, it needs it needs a bit longer. So that. Right, so again, let's, let's just do this again. Words. This. So it takes like this. Let's just ignore this, these values here for a while. Let's just see. But it also can do this. And it could also do, for example, splice. Uh, 
and maybe even a slice of this one. So as you can see, it's all developed, right? So like designing, when you design an API, right, for your library or anything, right, if you, if you can use this one, right, instead of essentially the, the, this one, which requires like a lot of, like, you know, like, like it, it limits, it limits how you can call essentially these, uh, these, me these messages. Yeah, so when you design an API or, or a public library, then please use these um, string slices instead of other slices. So slices are not only like for strings, they're also for, from arrays, and I will cover that in a, in a future video if, if you like it. So let me know what you think about slices, if you would use them, if you agree on the fact that we should use like slices more for public APIs, right? Because it's like, it gives us much more flexibility on how to call. And let me know if you want any other subject covered, right? Because I'd like to make in these videos to explain what I discovered, like say, while I was learning Rust, because uh, it helps, you know, if we learn from each other. So I wish you a very nice evening or a day or a week or life and uh, have fun coding Rust.